welcome into the still to be named name pending name to be game. announced at a later date Rumpel MNS Steel Softball Steel. Podcast. Oh. I am Will Matt. That's he's here this time. No, we I'm got not. the Shifter Boys, as I like to call us in the description, and pretend that it's a different person look, posting videos. Look, it's Will. Will's behind me. Oh wow! Calling me Will Levis. How dare you? That's obviously the joke you were making. Point is, we have okay, so we have forty minutes as we record these things on Zoom, and honestly, that has necessitated the fact that we're actually going to do two shows a week. I think we're just going to see how this goes. So we're going to quickly run through the last lady college football this past week too. Um, and by the end of the show, we're also going to deliver, at least I'm going to deliver my first top four Heisman candidates. So let's get into it. And obviously the biggest game going into the week was Matt. What was it? Uh, Michigan versus Texas. Oh, see, I thought you were going to do like a little joke. Oh, my bad. Uh, uh, that, uh, Colorado versus Nebraska because people thought that it was going to be competitive even though Colorado is actually really bad. And oh yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. my bad. Whoa, I got ahead, but um, yeah, um, it looks um, like I might have been right about Texas, huh? Yeah, you absolutely were right about Texas. I did not think that uh, they would be able to replenish like that in the wide receiver core and along the line of scrimmage. Uh, the truth is, their wide receiver core actually is probably more balanced than it was last year because last year. Uh, they had guys with very specific roles. And honestly, like talking about Bond, Bolden, and Golden, like they can all do a little bit of everything. So um, that like they're very dynamic in the receiver room. Uh, they obviously they're going to run the ball like hell. Like I can only imagine how crazy this offense would have been if they would have had Baxter. Um, and the other thing I, I think I'm wrong about, uh, Twin Ewers is a big time player, man. Like that guy shows up in the big games. And that's this is three years in a row that Quinn Ewers has proved me wrong. Three years ago, though, I wasn't like on the internet, like publicizing it or anything. I was pretty notorious. Like I was pretty adamant that Alabama was going to skull drag Texas. They were going to walk in to DKR and just have their way with them. Honestly, Bama was probably a Quinn Ewers injury away from losing that game pretty handedly. Hey, just like they did the next year when Quinn Ewers walked in there and kind of thoroughly dominated. Well, like in that tie team was not what they would go on to become. The offensive line was bad at that point, and they grew throughout the year. Same with the the defense and the secondary. So still, like, but these early season big games, uh, this is the team just built to win those. And yeah, Michigan just does not uh, have it, uh, whether it be in the quarterback room out wide and honestly it doesn't even look like they have it along the lines of scrimmage this team Can they not even run the ball no they uh Isn't it like 2.3 yards per carry or something crazy is what i saw yeah it's not been good to be honest with you um just rough seeing what's going on there but like obviously real quick gotta give major flowers to texas and quinn ewers this is probably the best that quinn has looked throughout a full game again People can throw numbers at me all they want. I know what I saw. I, I saw a guy uh, operate well within structure, but also outside of structure. Um, like, I think Quinn has all the physical talent in the world, and I think his processor is even better. We'll talk about uh, a, a person for a split second uh, as an example of someone who at least just doesn't trust what they see. Quinn trusts what he sees. So uh, I like what I saw out of Texas in general. Uh, and, yeah, I feel pretty good about that team. Um I, I'm not totally out on Michigan, though. I don't know about you. Like, I like I think they're going to be sort of a middle-of-the-road Big Ten team, but they're still going to be south. I don't know if this game was, like, on the docket to talk about, and I think it kind of got, like, uh, under-publicized. But I think with Penn State having trouble with Bowling Green, it kind of, like, um, makes me feel a little better about Michigan because maybe I think Penn State was one of the teams in that conference that I thought could throttle them until I saw their result against Bowling Green. And then, like, also – with Oregon, Boise State's obviously a lot better. I think Boise State's actually good, but I'm sure we'll get to that game too. But, like, I think Oregon's maybe not as ready as we thought we'd see. So there is time for Michigan to improve um, yeah. here. But I think they are definitely the worst 
in well, I don't know about Penn State. Maybe it was just the game where they didn't take bowling games seriously. But well, well, bad. that and also defensively in the first half, really bad. Uh, and then they figured it out later on. Yeah, but uh, Bowling Green CFB uh twenty five legends up there. Yes, we beat them. Yes, we sure did. Kent State Dynasty. Not uploading it or anything, but just just so you know, we have a punter as our starting quarterback right now. So. Yeah, things are going great, actually. College football geniuses right here, but also you touched on Oregon. And yeah, I'll actually, I'll go ahead and knock them out of the way, too. Um, people don't realize in college football, and honestly in the NFL, too, because you look at, for instance, t- uh, talking about last night, Aaron Rodgers can't beat the 49ers, man. And whether it's his fault or not, that's just, it's, it's a monkey on the back situation. And People don't realize it, but that was actually the situation for Oregon. They had never beaten Boise State. They were 0-3 against Boise State going into that game. And especially coming off of a really shaky week one performance to get taken to the wire and still figure out a way to win. Especially, I know it's a group of five team, but but they have a Heisman caliber running back on that team. We will talk about him later. Um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't feel great about Oregon, I feel better than I did. Uh, Penn State, uh, I don't feel as good about them as I did in week one. But I'm like, I still think they're strong. And I do think those two teams are probably better than Michigan. And then here's the big one. Uh, week four, do you know who Michigan plays? Um, Oregon? Just USC. Guess. Oh, oh yeah, they have. They already won a big one against LSU, so... Yeah, which again, USC, another situation. I've just got to, I'm going to go ahead and admit I was wrong on. They've turned that defense around overnight, and they, much like Texas, have a passing game that can absolutely. So, like, Will Johnson, the star corner for Michigan, did not play all too well in week one. However, he actually played pretty well last week. However, nobody else in the secondary did. Uh, and did they're Johnson not going to have a lot big of- six in the first game, though. He did have a pick six, but up until that point, he'd actually been pretty bad. He'd been beaten a lot. He'd given up like well over 150 receiving yards. It was actually not, it was a rare, like bad performance from Will Johnson. But honestly, like, uh, and I could be totally, like, Michigan people can tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like he got a little bit bigger. So I wonder if he was adjusting to maybe a new body type. Because to me, like, like, and again, it might be my perception just being wrong, but I, I feel like he's always been a little bit more lengthy. And this year, it seems like he was a little more filled out. So I wonder if, Maybe he was just adjusting to a new style of play. But, yeah, week over week, Will was a lot Will better. Will Johnson needs a diet, question mark. Will Will's just starting rumors. Look at um, it. I was calling him muscular. What? Yeah. Anyway. um, So, yeah, Michigan, very shaky. Don't know how they're going to do that in the stretch. They also have to figure out the quarterback situation because – they're not going to win uh, with two quarterbacks. Um, and I'll actually just go ahead and say it. I know he wasn't all that great, but uh, Davis Warren, he is the one you have to go with. Uh, Alex Orgy can't – he can't make the easy throws, uh, and at least Warren can. Um, so, yeah, like this is a situation where they wanted a guy to take the job uh, due to his, like, athletic talent. He didn't. Um, I think people kind of maybe looked at the the Alex Orgy situation almost similar to like Anthony Richardson versus Emory Jones a few years ago, where it was like clearly obvious that Anthony was better. And like, because there are people somehow that think that Alex maybe could have even played last year. I haven't heard that a lot, but like people that act like JJ wasn't that good. JJ McCarthy was really good. I think Michigan fans are finding that out. Uh, the ones who didn't already know are finding that out pretty harshly. Um, so I yeah, I think he'll be good in the NFL, but that's just me. <laughs> I think he'll be okay. Um, we won't know yeah. until next year, though, <laughs> exactly. So, point is, um, Michigan got absolutely throttled. Uh, still definitely a fringe playoff team, in my opinion. Like, I don't think uh, this hurts them. Another team that is still a fringe playoff team, but oh no, they got embarrassed Saturday. Notre Dame, the <laughs> The speech at the end of the game was so cool, though. That head coach, you could tell he really loved his players, and I just yeah. love to see that. That was awesome. I want to say it was Hammock, Coach Hammock, I want to say. I- I'm sorry if I'm butchering this. this is- we're a very professional outfitter right here. I have laundry behind me. Guys, I just like college football. I want to talk Put about it. Put it away. It's the same way. No. No. And you also forgot to mention my favorite college football player, Bowling Green running back, Terry Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't forget that. You forget anyway, that. So, never forget. That's tomorrow. Anyway, I know. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Notre Dame. Wow. Uh, I don't know. This might even be worse than the Marshall game. Like, because at least the Marshall game, you kind of had like the whole like, oh, it's year one under Marcus Freeman establishing the culture, this, that, and the third. But they just got straight up outgained uh, and pushed around by NIU. And I think a lot of that is due to philosophy around the offense because uh, it's pretty clear they did not want to run Riley Leonard. The problem is it seems like the only thing that he is exceptional at is running the ball. He's not a very good passer. Um, And I know I understand wanting to protect him. I think it was the next like two or three weeks where they were supposed to be not very strong opponents. I'm not exactly sure who they have upcoming. And the truth is, uh, unless they drop another embarrassing game, probably won't be on the lookout for Notre Dame until they play inevitably Florida State and then at the end of the year, USC. Um, Well, Florida State might be easier than Northern Illinois, man. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, Northern Illinois, like, their whole thing forever is, like, they were going to play old school football, they were going to run the ball, and they were going to play defense. And then it was always just like, okay, well, they'll play defense, but they're not going to run the ball. Well, they they sure – they did enough. They sure did enough to beat a Notre Dame team that oh, just looked sluggish. I had a question here. So what's your uh, thoughts on, like, the coaching decision at the end not to try to get five or ten more yards and just go ahead and kick the field goal with, like, six seconds on the clock? Because that was like, even if it didn't get blocked, I still don't think it was going through. Yeah, I don't see. I don't really understand it, but to be honest with you, this game, it it isn't even necessarily about the win or the loss. Like, say say they just make that field goal at the end and they eat by. Are we really talking about this Notre Dame team any different? They look terrible. Like. No, but, like, I mean, we've seen, like, obviously when, especially with 12 teams being in it now, if they win this game and then they lose the game, the loss does matter. I know that's not what you're saying. No, but, exactly. Like, I mean, I'm sure they feel a hell of a lot better if they won, so. Well, yeah, and see, but here's the thing, and now I want to talk about the general theme, and I, people sleep on it every year. Teams get shocked in week two. Teams that shouldn't get pushed to the wire, and you will inevitably have teams that shouldn't lose that do. Um yeah. I think every – exactly. That happened to you, but also I think every fan that, like, six to a team – like, my my example for Auburn is, like, okay, back in 2015, we got taken to overtime by Jacksonville State, right? Uh, and I can't remember if it – it was a little further on in the season uh, two years ago when we got taken to the wild by Georgia State. I don't think that was week two, but similar kind of situation there. Um, everybody has a week two story. Unfortunately, sometimes people's week two story isn't that they got Hawaii. taken on limit. I'm sorry, Matt. The fall of 03 was a tough time. I was one years old, already depressed. Speaking of depression, yeah, I'm really sad <laughs> about the, the narratives around Marcus Freeman right now. But, uh, yeah, that team was just not prepared to play. Um, So I don't know what the deal was there. Um, Marcus kind of talked himself into a hole saying, oh, we've been here before. That's an unfortunate thing to say, man. Like, oh, uh, I got to be real. Um, If you, if <sighs> you go acquire Riley, Lynn, you know what his strengths are. They're not, they're not offensively talented enough to, not play into his strengths and win another way is what it looks like. Um, so cost him the game. With the ball hmm? do great. Like it was just kind of running because am I wrong or did Duke play Notre Dame last year? No. They didn't. Who was I it? I don't that, think so. They they they, like, they might have was it Clemson? They, do... they took it, well they, they beat Clemson in week one last year. Yeah, and then they took somebody else to the wire like a few weeks later. And for some reason, I thought it was Notre Dame in my head. But I it might remember, have been. I just remember I, he had like a crazy rushing performance. I'll check. You finish your point. Yeah. So uh, point is, um, 
The holes in this Notre Dame team got exposed. They played with their heads on fire in week one against Texas A&M. And I know a lot of people are saying, like, oh, well, we've overrated Texas A&M a lot. So who's to say that win was strong? Well, Texas A&M showed that they have an offense with life this past week. I, I like, I know, like, it was a team they were supposed to body bag. But, like, there have been plenty of times where Texas A&M was supposed to body bag a team that didn't. There were plenty of teams yep, that, like, that were supposed to body bag a team and they didn't. So I think that's still a strong win. I still think Notre Dame is a good football team when they can get a team in a rock fight and lean on them and be ahead early. See, and, and that's the other thing I wanted to say about Michigan. Michigan um, has never been a team constructed to win playing from behind or win a shootout. They just – they not not even under the prime like, these last few years of Harbaugh. They did us last year, though. We led the entire game and they beat us. I mean – Right, but what if I told you 95% of their snaps last year they had the lead? Well, I heard that stat uh, plenty when we were in the lead the entire game. There you also, go. Also, it was uh, for Riley Leonard, it was Notre Dame, and he had over 100 yards rushing in that game. Yeah. So they saw it firsthand. He's a fantastic runner, but, like, just the passing ability is not there. So Notre Dame, um, I'm not – again, I'm not out on them. I, th- I think it's a bad loss. It's an ugly loss. But – that's still a team that, well, they have a very talented secondary. It's still going to be a solid defense. Just offensively, they're not going to be special. Defense is going to have to win them games. And I, I think every game down the stretch, except for maybe USC, the defense can go out there and win it. And they sure tried their best to against NIU, but the offense has to do a little bit more. And the, the way to do a little bit more is run Riley Leonard or start someone else. So. I uh, hate that for Notre Dame. We already touched on Oregon a little bit. Uh, I feel a little bit better about them, even though it was a shaky win. And now we're going to talk about Ashton Genty because he will be named later on my Heisman top four. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I'm not going by what I think the voters will do or should do. Or sorry, uh, what they will do or would do, what I think they should do. Ashton Genty uh, has been absolutely outstanding through two weeks. Um, he was absolutely incredible against Oregon, but Oregon was able to bring uh pull out the win. So they advanced to 2-0, and you mentioned the Penn State situation with them eking out the win against Bowling Green. So we're going to check the notes. I have it written down here to talk about Auburn. I uploaded a video about oh, Auburn. I do have a point with Oregon, because I did actually get to see the end of this one, because guys, there is a website out there. I won't put it out there, but you can watch Peacock stuff for free. But, um, so... Dylan Gabriel, at the end of this game, he does need to clean up some things. Definitely, I think you know that. I know that. But the biggest thing for me was there was two plays in the fourth quarter that could have easily lost them the game because they uh, ran a go ball with uh, Trayshawn Holden, and he got, like, butt booty naked open. And uh, not only did they do this once, they did it twice. And Dylan Gabriel missed it both times, not only second down, but also third down on a drive where they were trying to win the game. But they were able to stop Boise State and get the ball back. But if you do that against USC – or uh, Ohio State or Michigan, even you're not going to win the game. So yeah, but I will say it's it, it is nice to look and say like okay, they pulled out some ugly wins. They played far from their best football, but they are still two and zero. So I feel pretty decent about that. Um, I'm also just not worried. I think people are putting a way too much stock in USF taking Bama to the fourth quarter, like Bama lean when they had to, like they made the game. So U.S. Uh, so I, South Florida. You, you uh, cut out had, for a second there. Oh, it was because I put the phone in the covers. Um, so South Florida. Don't look at me like that. Uh, South Florida. Uh, that it was actually like a real hate week because of what happened last year where they almost beat us. Their bar stool account was uh like taking liberties at the Alabama oh, Twitter yeah. the entire week talking about how they yeah. were going to beat us. So this was a big game for them. But um, yeah, I I did kind of lose it in the, uh, the fourth quarter, Dante got to see that firsthand. Uh, I, I did. And I went to go get my food and then I uh, came back and then they started scoring. Uh, I think honestly, they just ran out of gas and they played real hard. I think Alabama will be fine though. Yeah. Um. Again, like, cause this wasn't like mo- in most of these spots, like you talk about like uh, the last couple of games, you talked about it's a letdown spot. This is never going to be a letdown spot for Alabama. This is actually more leaned into the monkey on the back spot because they knew what happened last year. USF is always going to play them tough. USF just is a relatively tough team. Like they're, I'll, I'll put it this way: they're a lot closer to Boise State than they are NIU. 
That's not to be disrespectful towards that program, but let's hear it. It's a little bit of a different team. Even though Boise State's defense is pretty bad, we won't talk about that, though. But um, um, to keep with the like the one more point here, Alabama does have some stuff to work on, especially uh, starting on offense because we just do not play in the first and second quarter right now. No, nope. I don't. And uh, I mean, Georgia obviously had that problem against Clemson, but Clemson's obviously a lot better of a defense. I know their offense sucks uh, than what we faced against South Florida or Western Kentucky because we did the same thing as Western Kentucky. We didn't score on the first three drives, so we got to work on that if we want to beat Georgia in a couple weeks. Yeah, and uh, quickly, I'll just go ahead and say, finally, the Iowa State Cyclones take back the Cyhawk Trophy. Uh, I think second time in three, four years, Matt Campbell has won that game. Of course, I think he was 0 for his first seven, so maybe starting to be a turnaround in that rivalry. But we saw a rare thing. We saw Iowa get a 13 to nothing lead and lose it. Well, maybe they just should not score and let punt. That's what they Good did point. last year, and it worked. Yeah. Um. All around, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm honestly just happy for Matt Campbell. Um, like, the, he's a guy that I feel like was a very hot, uh, like, coaching commodity, and people have acted like uh, the last couple of years that his stock has fallen. That's just not how being the head coach at Iowa State works. Speaking of another Big 12 program, uh, and to hinge off of uh, yeah, a prediction I made on the show last week, Kansas State makes a comeback to beat Tulane in the end. I predicted Tulane to at least cover, and they did. Kansas State does not play well on the road. Tulane, tougher than people think. And uh, they showed that, but Kansas State did what they had to do. They eked out uh, the win, so... Claps up for the for the Wildcats. No. Do, do you not have any? Do you not have any soul for them after you throttled them in the bowl game a couple of years ago? I mean, they gave the Cowboys Deuce Vaughn, who contributes absolutely nothing. So thanks, Kansas State. Woo! Uh, speaking of contributing nothing, um, I, no, actually, that'd be unfair to say. Let's let's talk about uh, Oklahoma State and Arkansas because. Complete total tale of two halves here because in the first half, you'd probably look at Arkansas's offense and go, oh, oh, wow. Okay, like Taylor Green is for real. Jaquindon Jackson is for real. And both of those things still are true. Um, Oklahoma's defense, uh, sorry, Oklahoma State's defense. Oklahoma also had a messy week. But Oklahoma State's defense all around, pretty poor. Um, But what was worse in this game uh, was the turnover luck and a bounce of ball luck for the Razorbacks. Uh, they threw this game away in the second half. And you can look at that and you can toss that on Sam Pittman and you can toss that on Taylor Green and this, that, and the third. The way I look at it is more so they had a dominant win. They lost it. They blew it. They got to learn how to not lose before they can learn how to win. Um, so where do they build from here? Because with Arkansas, there genuinely is something to build on this year going forward. They're, they're probably going to play, especially some SEC teams, a lot tougher than they should. Honestly, same role I think Auburn's going to play this year. Auburn's not going to contend in the SEC, but we're probably going to take some teams to the wire, you know, when we don't play like we did against Cal. Um, I was there. I had to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, they, they they're like one in three or one in four when I'm there, so I'm sorry, Will. I they won the first one. I think they've lost the last four times I've had to worry about tickets. So you're welcome. Take you me. were also there at the Georgia State game. <laughs> the crowd had the same reaction as they did in yep. the couch. The game that tricked very silly people into believing TJ Finley was any good at all. So um, Jessica, can you touch on, not even touching on a game, but uh, staying in the Big 12, I hate to say it, this we're probably nearing the end of the line for Dave Aranda as a head coach, and I honestly think that's very silly. Baylor is not going to find a head coach that is better than Dave Aranda, I don't think. And I heard the broadcast narrative talking about, like, oh, well, maybe he's just a guy that's better off being an analyst. No, Dave Aranda is a good leader. He's coaching at Baylor, man. Like, I like I'm sorry like it's a it's a tough job to have and he's sure has he done a lot with them 
No. Who has? I mean, yeah, like Matt Rule got a good bit out of that Baylor team. Art Bryles got a good bit out of that Baylor team. But it's not like they did anything exceptional. It's Baylor, man. They're a window team. It's like Iowa State. Now, I'm not saying Dave Aranda is the same caliber of head coach as Matt Campbell. Matt Campbell is probably a tier above him uh, or two. Um, but I don't know. I kind of hate the way that narrative is going about Dave Aranda because I don't think this stuff is remotely his fault. Um, so there's that. And then, Matt, you touched on this beginning, but Nebraska absolutely pants Colorado. Colorado is a bad football team. They they are yeah. a two-man – well, three-man because – I don't disrespect Mr. Horn, but um, Joe Horn, yeah, he's a good receiver. Jimmy Horn, Jimmy Horn he's a good receiver. But um, yeah, their their defense is terrible. Their O line is terrible. And yes, I know Shadur Sanders is catching some heat for what he said after the game, uh, and it's bad as a leader and a bad look for a guy that wants to go to the NFL. But it's just true. True, yeah. It's it's really bad. I, I'm not blaming Dion or anybody. I'm obviously not a Colorado hater, but I do think this is really cool for Nebraska and Matt Rule. I know that you've touched on. I know you were high on them. You actually drafted their defense in our uh, fantasy college league. So um, I know you don't want to talk much about uh, fantasy football and how that's going so far. But um, I want you to like uh, touch a little bit on Nebraska because I don't really know much about them. Okay, so with Nebraska, um, the last few years, I mean, I feel like the story for the last like probably three or four, like going back even like the Scott Frost era, um turnover or sorry not well turnovers but mainly losing one score games right um it was something like a few years ago they went like they played in like seven or, or they played in eight one score games and went one and seven this that and third um last year they played in i think it was a similar amount of one score games i cannot remember the exact number but they had like 15 total turnovers in those games 14 of them by the quarterback right so the whole story going into this year is like okay Riola doesn't have to be special. He just has to protect the football. Well, Riola actually just might be special. Patrick but Mahomes. along with doing that, he's also playing like he's he's protecting the football and they're playing good defense and they have good perimeter talent. They can run the ball. Nebraska's a good team, man. They're probably going to be undefeated. And I think it's week nine. They go to play Ohio State. Nebraska is a legitimate playoff contender right now. That would be really cool because there's a lot of legacy with Nebraska that people don't realize. Like they have like yeah. 15 or 16 national championships. They were probably the team of the 90s outside of Miami taking over in the late 90s. But, you know, yeah. I think it's be cool. I think it's kind of like when Texas got good again. I think a lot of people enjoy that. Yeah. So quickly, I'm going to run through the last couple bit of results because I think we have 10 minutes left to be able to record this. So quickly, another blue blood that is reemerging, Tennessee. Absolutely embarrassed NC State. I talked about the mismatch or the matchup nightmare supposedly that people were posing regarding Nico and facing a lot of pressure. I said it wouldn't be much of a problem for him. Uh, he had some issues. He had a couple of picks there, including a pick six. Uh, so, like, I'm not saying he was perfect against pressure or anything like that, but I thought he was really, really, really good. And just watching him play the game of football, I think he is one of the best quarterbacks in college football. Uh, I think he is a Heisman contender right now. Again, don't look at the numbers because, again, there's a. it's one of those things you cannot look at the numbers in regards to a quarterback because his numbers look a lot more impressive, for instance, uh, on, on the pick six. He got drilled, right? So say that doesn't happen and it's not a pick, maybe it's just an incompletion. And then there was also, I think it was like a 61-yard deep ball that got called back. Well, changed those two things and the numbers look totally different, but nothing necessarily changed about his level of play. Because I thought his level of play was very good. That offense is awesome. Uh, Dylan Sampson is an absolute beast of a running back. He's incredible. Uh, Tennessee is a playoff contender. Uh, they are probably, uh, aside from Texas and Georgia, they're probably the team that I feel the best about in the SEC. Uh, so, And that's including LSU, uh, which, by the way, LSU big-time matchup this week uh upcoming which i can't wait to preview against south carolina so that will help me transition real quick into south carolina absolutely embarrassing kentucky didn't necessarily see that one coming me but, neither uh, yeah south carolina's uh d-line and specifically their pass rush is incredible um they're on they're awesome from the interior and they open up a lot of opportunities for dylan stewart who for my money is the best edge rusher in college football through two weeks, he has been by far the most dominant. And just, again, I don't care about 
numbers or pressure rate. Like, I think his are high. I don't really care. I'm just talking about what I'm seeing with my eyeballs. He's an absolute freak, right? Um, He's a geography major. He's a freaking psycho, Will. We all knew this. Which, it, this just lends well into his future if he's a psychopath. But yeah, no. I mean, if you don't know about Dylan Stewart yet, man, no. Because the the the, the best matchup this upcoming week is South Carolina's defensive line versus LSU's offensive line. Arguably the best offensive line versus maybe a top three defensive line and probably, for my money, the best edge rusher in the sport right now. So Emer ball, baby. Yeah. Um, again, they embarrassed Kentucky again. And that just sucks. Like, I have a little bit of bias towards Kentucky, so not necessarily loving seeing that. Uh, Syracuse gets a really strong win against Georgia Tech. Uh, both of those are solid teams, and Matt, you predicted it. You predicted Syracuse to be in the picture in the ACC down the stretch. I overlooked their favorable schedule in favor and of teams like Virginia Tech and NC State, and I look like an idiot for that. So, it's a transfer team. portal team that was put together. Me and uh, Terry on got the privilege of watching the ACC network at the Cheddars one day, and we got to learn a lot about Syracuse. They have a lot of great talent, including uh, Jackson Meeks and uh, the Ohio State quarterback. I always forget his name, but he's there. I'm a cool one. Yeah, he's a good quarterback. Yeah, he, he, he's good enough to win it too. So, a uh, strong win, but honestly, again, I don't feel any worse about Georgia Tech. Like, I think it's a strong team, and I think any Saturday, don't overlook Georgia Tech, man. Um, Georgia so, Tech. and by the way, just real quick, Clemson, they look strong in their game, so at least they have a pulse. Uh, let's see, USC shut out their opponent. Um, I'm sorry, I, I know – They should. I believe it was Utah State, I want to say. I know they should do that, uh, but they they haven't always, so that's something to watch out for. Um, That being said, now to close out the show, I'm going to give you my Heisman top four. These are the four that if I were sending them to New York today, this is who I would pick, and I know at least one of these is going to cause major. I've talked about all of them on the show. First off, Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers would be my winner at this point, so I just want to go ahead and get him out of the way. He's he's been the most impressive quarterback in college football, especially compared to um, the challenge that faced him going into Ann Arbor and shredding Michigan. So, yeah, Quinn Ewers, Ashton Genty. Now, now I will say the bottom three I don't have in any particular order, but Ashton Genty clearly the most impressive running back in the sport, and this is a like this is a very big running back year for college football. I mean, we have. Ollie Gordon, who actually got outrushed by Jaquindon Jackson. Uh, but you have like Ollie Gordon, you have Devin Neal, you have so many great running backs in the sport. Ashton Genty is the best one, man. Speaking of best ones, Dylan Stewart. I know he's a freshman. I know he's played two games. I don't care. If I were sending him today, he would be in my top four players in the sport. And then finally, and this is the one that might piss you off, Nico Iamaliava. This one's a little bit more projectionary, but I think Nico Iamaliava, just based on what I'm seeing with my eyes, is at least the second best quarterback in college football. No. Why? Okay, I'm just going to. So there's a lot of quarterbacks that I think are better than him, and I'm not going to just slander him. But um, Jackson Dart has seven incompletions on the year, and he's not in your Heisman. Who's he played, man? Who is South Carolina played? Kentucky. <laughs> They're not good this year. They're not going to be. Their line of scrimmage is relatively good. Yeah. They're an SEC squad, man. They're an SEC team, which makes them better. But, like, I don't think you can just – okay. So, there's not a lot of people who have played a lot of people. Like, Alabama technically hasn't played anybody. But Jalen Melro, like, who people were projecting to win the Heisman, it was your Heisman pick. He doesn't have only seven incompletions of the season. Obviously, I'm biased towards him. Carson Carson Beck played Clemson, but he doesn't. I mean, that's just an insane stat line. In my opinion, Carson Beck wasn't all that impressive uh, at stretches in this past game against uh, Tennessee. Was Tennessee Tech? Yeah, Tennessee Tech. Um, I, uh, and against Clemson in the first half, he was kind of like his Snapchat game, if you know, you know. But um, uh, no, I just I'm not going to sit here and slander Tennessee's quarterback. But I think that Jackson Dart's just better. Uh, look, I'm not telling you he's not better. I'm just saying through these first two weeks, Nico is more impressive. And I mean, to to be fair, like we can we're gonna have all season to argue about the Heisman, but 
And I mean, the picture doesn't become clear until like halfway through through the season. Absolutely. But so right now it's just kind of a lot of, you know, projections. But I project, if we want to use that word, that Jackson Dart will have a better season. I'm not going to say it's going to be marginally better than the Tennessee quarterback. I'm saying it's Tennessee quarterback because I will butcher his name. But um, you know what happened last time I tried to say a name uh, on the okay. show. So, um, yeah, I just that's what I'm projecting going forward. I like the Dylan Stewart pick. He's a psycho. I, I would also butcher the Boise State's running back's name, but I think he will be good. And then obviously, Quint, Quint Hewers, I think, will go to New York. I, I think I said that in the uh, preview show, and you looked at me like an idiot. So, yeah, again, I got to eat all my crow about Quinn Ewers. He has taken a big step through two weeks. Again, yeah. Two weeks. He's taken a big step, but I mean, all of these guys. Like, through two weeks, uh, a kid who was in high school last year is the best edge rusher in the country. Uh, through two weeks, uh, like I said, just based purely on physical ability and poise, I think Nico is the second-best quarterback in college football. If he get to the end of the year, he might not even be a top-five quarterback in the SEC. Who knows, right? That's just Did the nature you? of the game, man. So, um, we mentioned Ali Gordon a second ago, and I know we're kind of coming to a close here. Um, and I just wanted to mention a funny little thing I saw. Did you see like the mass rumor that got started before the Arkansas game that he had chlamydia and wasn't going to play? No. <laughs> like I, it was like a Twitter account and it was uh, like a troll account, but like, it wasn't like a well-known troll account. So everybody took it seriously for like a few hours that he wasn't going to play the game because he had chlamydia and Oklahoma state was trying to figure out how to, uh, announce it. And uh, with all the, you know, pushback he had during the offseason, that's just not a good look for Ollie Gordon. <laughs> he obviously played. And, like, I know there's quick ways to get rid of chlamydia, but, like... Why do you know that? There's quick ways to get rid of that. But, like, so, why? Like, I'm assuming it was an Arkansas fan, and it almost worked. They almost got him. But, like, that's just one of the crazier things I've heard. You, like, hear these stories about people giving out people's phone numbers like Stetson Bennett. But that one, uh, that one's pretty crazy. I don't, I don't know how well-known it got in the Oklahoma State locker room. But it was, it was pretty big in the – well, I saw it a few times on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> and people were, like, in an uproar. Welcome to the college football right? show, Matt. Huh? So, welcome to the college football show, Matt. Oh, my God. No, like, no, I, I just feel like happened. I feel like we have to talk about that because like there's crazy we, we talk about it a lot in the SEC, but like it goes other 